Your mom just dumped you as an egg on some random leaf in Hawaii and flew off without a second thought. Now you're hatching into darkness, emerging as something that looks like a tiny green twig with an identity crisis. Welcome to life as a carnivorous caterpillar, where you're basically the vampire of the caterpillar world, except nobody finds you sexy or mysterious, just weird and kind of terrifying. Right off the bat, you realize something's wrong. While your distant cousins are munching on leaves like proper caterpillars, you're sitting here with zero interest in salad. Your body's built different too. Instead of those cute little legs other caterpillars use to inch along branches, you've got these modified prolegs that work more like grappling hook. And those things on your back? Sensory bristles that can detect the slightest vibration. You're basically a living motion sensor with trust issues. Your first meal needs to happen fast, because unlike those leaf-eating wimps, you can't just nibble on your birthplace when you get hungry. You position yourself along a branch, stretching out to look exactly like a harmless twig. This isn't some casual yoga pose either. You're locked in place, muscles tensed, waiting. Hours pass. A whole day even. Your stomach's doing backflips, but you stay frozen. Movement means death out here, and not the quick kind. Finally, a fruit fly lands nearby. Your sensory bristles pick up the vibration instantly. In less than a tenth of a second, you snap backward, grabbing the fly with your front legs that work like bear trap. The fly never saw it coming. Neither did you, really, since your strike happens faster than your own brain can process. You're basically running on pure instinct and built-in murder reflexes. Not bad for day two of existence, but here's where it gets tricky. You can't just camp in one spot forever. After a few successful catches, the local insects start avoiding your branch altogether. Even bugs aren't that stupid. So, you need to relocate, except moving means exposing yourself to birds, spiders, and parasitic wasps who'd love nothing more than to turn you into their personal incubator. Every journey between hunting spots is basically running across a highway blindfolded during rush hour. You find a new spot near some rotting fruit. Smart move. Fruit flies can't resist fermented sugar, and you're counting on their addiction being stronger than their survival instincts. You position yourself perfectly, looking so much like part of the branch that even you're starting to believe it. Another fly approaches. You strike. Miss. The fly escapes and probably goes to warn all its friends about the killer stick. Great. Now you've blown your cover and wasted energy you can't afford to lose. Three days pass without food. Regular caterpillars can handle starvation way better since plants don't run away. But you? You're burning through your reserves, just maintaining your ambush position. Your body's starting to eat itself from the inside. This is the part where most of your siblings have already checked out. The failure rate for carnivorous caterpillars makes tech startups look like safe investment. Desperation kicks in. You try a different strategy, positioning yourself near a spider's web. Not in it, obviously because you're not completely insane, just close enough to catch the insects that bounce off the outer threads. It's risky, playing this close to another predator's territory, but desperate times and all that. A small moth hits the web's edge and tumbles free. You snatch it mid-fall, the spider notices and starts moving toward you. Time to leave. Now. You're growing though, slowly but surely. Each successful hunt makes you a bit larger, a bit stronger, and ironically, a bit easier to spot. The bigger you get, the harder it becomes to pass as just another twig. You're starting to look more like a small branch, which means you need bigger hiding spots and bigger prey. A beetle larva crawls by. It's almost your size, but your stomach doesn't care about weight classes right now. You strike, and what follows is less of a meal and more of a wrestling match. You win, barely, but the victory tastes incredible. Two weeks in and you've developed a rhythm. Hunt at dawn when insects are sluggish. Hide during midday when birds are most active. Hunt again at dusk. Between hunts, you literally pretend to be dead wood for hours on end. Other caterpillars are out there living their best lives, forming little caterpillar friendships, maybe even caterpillar book clubs. You? You're a anti-social twig with anger management issues and a strict no-vegetarian policy. The rainy season hits which should be good news. More moisture means more insects, but it also means more competition. Other predators are thriving too. A praying mantis sets up shop on your tree. That's like having a serial killer move in next door, 
you watch it demolish a butterfly with clinical efficiency. Note to self, find a new tree, immediately. Your new territory is less ideal. Fewer insects, but also fewer things trying to kill you. You'll take it. You've learned to be less picky about your meals, too. Aphids, gnats, even the occasional ant if you're really desperate. Each one barely counts as a snack, but they add up. You're like a college student surviving on ramen, except your ramen fights back and sometimes wins. Then something weird starts happening. Your body feels different, tighter. You're getting ready to molt, which for a normal caterpillar means a quick costume change. For you, it means being completely vulnerable while you shed your skin. You can't hunt, can't move, can't even pretend to be a twig convincingly. You're just hanging there like a free buffet sign for anything with wings or eight legs. The molt takes forever. Or maybe it just feels that way when every second could be your last. Your old skin finally splits and you wiggle out, revealing a fresh new exterior. You're bigger now, sporting fancier camouflage with little bumps and ridges that make you look even more wood-like. If there were caterpillar fashion shows you still wouldn't get invited, but at least you're harder to spot. A month in and you've become a proper assassin. Your strike speed has improved, your camouflage is on point. You've even learned to use weather patterns to your advantage, hunting more aggressively before storms when insects fly lower. But something's changing inside you, a strange restlessness. Your body's preparing for the final transformation, and part of you knows this whole murderous twig lifestyle is temporary. You've survived longer than 90% of your siblings, which sounds impressive, until you remember most of them died in the first week. Your body's carrying enough protein from all those kills to fuel your metamorphosis. Other caterpillars are spinning silk cocoons like fancy sleeping bags. You? You're going underground, burrowing into loose soil to pupate in darkness like some kind of budget vampire. The soil feels strange against your skin. You've spent your entire life above ground. And now you're digging your own temporary grave. You hollow out a small chamber just big enough for what comes next. Your body releases enzymes that basically turn your insides into soup. Yeah, you're literally dissolving yourself and hoping you reassemble correctly. What could go wrong? Days pass in darkness. You're neither caterpillar nor moth, just gene soup with aspirations. Your consciousness, if you can call it that, fades in and out. Sometimes you dream you're still hunting, still waiting on that branch. Other times, nothing. Just the slow reconstruction of something completely different from what you were. Three weeks later, you're pushing through the soil as an adult moth. Wings? Check. Fuzzy body? Check. Desire to eat other insects? Absolutely not. Plot twist. You don't eat anything anymore. Your mouth parts don't even work. All that carnivorous behavior was just to fuel this transformation, and now you're basically a flying reproductive organ with a week to live. You went from being a stealth predator to a horny fuzzball that'll die of starvation while trying to get laid. Nature really said, let's make this weird, and then made it weirder. Your wings are actually pretty decent, covered in patterns that help you blend into tree bark. At least nature gave you that much. But what good is camouflage when you're frantically flying around releasing pheromones like a perfume bomber? Every bird in the area knows exactly where you are. You're broadcasting your location to both potential mates and predators simultaneously. It's like posting your exact GPS coordinates on social media while being chased by the cops. You spend your last few nights frantically searching for a mate, knowing that your kids will inherit the same ridiculous life cycle. They'll hatch as tiny killers, pretend to be twigs, eat their body weight in insects, bury themselves alive, and emerge as sex-obsessed moths with no mouths. And somewhere out there, a fruit fly is probably laughing its tiny butt off at the cosmic joke of your entire existence.